Hello friends, welcome to Tales of Two Travelers. We're Arnold and Edwina, and in today's tales, we've compiled our top things to do in Granada, Spain. Granada is a city in southern Spain, and out of all the places we've visited this trip, this may be our favorite one yet. If you plan to visit Granada, and you should if you haven't, we hope you find this useful. Let's get started! If you only have time for one thing in Granada, it has to be Alhambra. The name comes from the Arabic word Alhambra, the red, due to the earthy color of its walls and the reddish nuances it takes under the twilight sun. It is what remains of a self-contained city from the Nasrid dynasty of the Kingdom of Granada, the last Muslim state of the Iberian Peninsula, whose existence extended from 1238 until its conquest by the Catholic monarchs in 1492. The complex consists of the Alcazaba fortress, the Nasrid palaces, and the orchards, gardens, and pavilions of Generalife. In all, a series of buildings that represent some of the best preserved of the historic Islamic world. The Nasrid palaces in particular blew us away. We've never seen anything like it. An extraordinary courtly complex, the result of juxtaposition and successive reform between the 13th and 15th century without obeying a plan or intention of forming a whole. Now that you've seen the Alhambra and will forever be in awe of its beauty, walk down to the city center of Granada and visit the cathedral and royal chapel. Like many other cathedrals in Andalusia, it was built on top of the city's mosque after the reconquest. We came on a Sunday and a mass was being celebrated, so we couldn't tour the cathedral freely, but we spent more time in the royal chapel, the highlight of which was the crypt of Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand, the Catholic monarchs. Unfortunately, photos and videos were not allowed inside, so you have to trust us that this is a sight worth seeing for yourself. A short walk from the Cathedral and Royal Chapel is Plaza de Isabel la Católica, where a monument depicting Christopher Columbus and Queen Isabella agreeing on the plan for his voyage to the West and signing the capitulations of Santa Fe stood. If you know why only Isabel is depicted here without Ferdinand alongside her, leave us a comment, we'd like to know. heart of Granada, the al Qaisaria was a former Arab souk in the 13th to 15th century, where silk was manufactured and sold. Today, it is a market street where you can find souvenirs and local craft shops. Corral del Carbon was an alhondiga, a place to store and trade grains and seeds, as well as accommodation for the merchants. It was built in 1336 and is allegedly the best preserved alhondiga in Spain. The lower floor was for goods and pack animals, and the two upper floors were the rooms where the merchants slept. There were no windows in the whole building to prevent the goods from being stolen. If you have more time in Granada, next to the Alhambra you'll find Carmen de los Martires, Garden of the Martyrs, also known as Corral de los Cautifos, Courtyard of the Captives. 
Isabella ordered the construction of a chapel here to honor the memory of the Christians who were imprisoned and killed during the Nasrid period. The chapel was actually demolished in 1842 and the land bought by private parties. In 1957, it was acquired by the city council of Granada and now it's kept as a complex of a house and gardens. A nice spot at the corner of the garden provides a sweeping view of the surrounding hill and area. Because of Granada's Moorish heritage, you should visit one of the many traditional tea houses lining the Calderería Nueva or Elfira streets and try the different kinds of tea they offer. We went to Teteria Baghdad and tried Moroccan tea, Turkish tea, Pakistani tea, and a local specialty tea called Ruby of Granada. They are sweet, aromatic, and flavorful. We love them. These tea houses open late in the day, so come in the late afternoons. They also sell pastries and sweets to enjoy with the tea. You'll also find great varieties of tea sold around the city. We all need to eat and we're in Spain, so go ahead, have tapas and drinks at a local bar. Only in Granada, they serve you free tapas with your drinks. How great is that? We love this place, Tocateja, so much we went twice. On top of that, our waiter gave us complimentary fino de naranja to finish our wonderful meal and made it more so. Next on the list is Albaitin, an old neighborhood in the city that maintains the layout of medieval Moorish narrow streets. We spent an entire day walking around and getting lost in this picturesque and charming district with its neat whitewashed, well-kept traditional houses. When in Albaitin, Mirador de San Nicolas is a must visit. It has the most spectacular view of Alhambra, with Granada at its feet and the mountain range of Sierra Nevada in the background. This video doesn't do it justice, and trust me, this view will stay with you for a while. San Nicolas Church, erected in 1525 on a former mosque, why am I not surprised, gives its name to the square and viewpoint. Thank you for staying till the end, so here's a bonus. You can also hike up to Sacro Monte, Another neighborhood located on the hillside and in the valley of Valparaiso, opposite the Alhambra. This is the neighborhood where the gypsies and the marginalized people lived in cave houses. Legend has it that after the loss of Granada to the Catholic monarchs, the formerly ruling Arabs hid their wealth and treasures in the hills and fled to Africa, leaving their slaves behind. Many of these slaves had noticed their owners' comings and goings, 
and overheard conversations regarding burying their possessions. So they took to the hills to dig up the treasures. Sadly, they found nothing, and exhausted by their effort and left with no shelter, they decided to make the caves their homes. It's intriguing to think that the treasures may still lie in wait, somewhere under our feet. The gypsy community are skilled craftsmen. They're known for horse rearing, weaving, metalwork, pottery, and basketry, which are exhibited here. It's easy to romanticize living in these cave houses now, and you may think they look reasonably comfortable. But remember that the people who lived here in the past did not have anywhere else to live and had to escape the religious and societal oppression, or worse, persecution. It was also said that flamenco originated here. The true flamenco, or so the locals say, is to be found in private homes in the early hours of the morning, when the gypsies gather and break out into spontaneous sessions of singing and dancing that last until dawn. Well, that concludes our list of top things to do in Granada. This beautiful city leaves a great impression on us and should be on your list if you ever visit Spain. If you enjoy our video, leave us a like and a comment. We'd like to hear from you. And subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.